The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the staff or management of Worldwide Digital Broadcasting Corporation. When my girl's got the sweetest pussy. Hey, welcome to SinCityBounty.com. <laughs> we are broadcasting live from fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, from our studios here at www.dbtv.com. And we haven't been here in two weeks, so it's a catch-up show. Catch-up show. Followed quickly by mustard and mayo. Or uh, we used to have, there used to be a show on one of the old 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 stations, and they would call it Heinz. Heinz. <laughs> Except that in light of recent KKK events, anything that sounds even slightly German is a little off-putting to me right true, now. True. True. Speaking of slightly German, well, I'm like, hold yes, on. Yes. Yes. I you got, got it. You got friend requested too. <laughs> I have to unfollow Dare Hogus because it's just a, a, a litany, just a like a constant running rant of just his bullshit. I love you to death, man, but nobody gives a fuck about your car. <laughs> he I did. You were about he, to say. Uh, so we have. A, we no, have he's a, got a nice car. Oh we have a mutual friend who uh, claims himself as a fascist. Uh, but we know he's that Francois he's the fascist, by the way. He's full of crap most of the time. He's a super nice guy in person. Total troll on the internet. Total. Um, but we got friend requested today after, what, like a year and a half hiatus? It's been at least two years for me. <laughs> and and uh, it's nothing but complaining. Just nothing but constant complaining. Non-stop complaining. It was hilarious. He needs to get him some vagina. <laughs> Actually, what he really needs is a big dick in his butt, and that'll shut him the fuck up. <laughs> you take it in the pooper, Dare Hogus, and everything's better. That's what she said. <laughs> we love you, Hogus. We do. We Even do if love you. You are a total we have to get together for drinks. You'll have to meet Dare Hogus. He'll really like you. The blonde hair. Is that a dude? That is a dude. Uh, that is a dude. A dude. It's a dude with a totally name that uh, could be a prophylactic. Okay. It's also... Yeah. <laughs> Who's calling you at this time? Don't they know you? Um, I expect my mom to call in a minute now. <laughs> she always does. All my motherfuckers, y'all ain't calling me. Nobody calls me anyway. <laughs> so it's a catch-up show. Um, let's do your story first. The one from today. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so school has started. School has started. I now have a high schooler, so that's been fun. <laughs> and um, school has started, and they—it's really great. They're really well connected online. My daughter has one physical book. Everything else is done online, um, but she had to sign up for this uh, Google Classroom. And so they sent an email for the parents to be able to sign in and access it. And um, I did. I just I clicked on the email and I accepted. And I get a frantic text today from my daughter saying, "You're listed in Google. <laughs> You're listed in Google Classroom. It's Toxie O'Shea. <laughs> it says my mom is Toxie O'Shea. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> what did you do?" <laughs> <laughs> and she's at school panicking, panicking. Were you and able apparently, to it? I had to email the teacher. Oh. Like, so it's really bad. This is my butt sex account. <laughs> well, I, I said, I said I have a, an account. It must have just my Gmail must have been up, and it must have just connected, and that was it. But I have an account that. Um, I just said I have an, I happen to have an account that I do not want to associate it with my daughter's schooling. <laughs> and then I had to message these guys. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, parenting fail hashtag, of the year. Parenting fail, and then hashtag my mom talks about butts on TV <laughs> or on, on the radio. 
Oh, that's some that's some good shit. Thank God I haven't done that yet. Oh yeah, that I mean I think that was my first. It, wait, it is my first kind of but wait, mess though, up with it. One of these days we're gonna walk into our school and some dad's gonna recognize us and be like, and he's gonna have jerk off face and we're gonna know our photos are in a spank bank and everything. We're gonna if be like, the, mm. the deal is if the dad recognizes and if the dad says something. Um, I mean, I had a, a guy at soccer once come up to me and, and he's just like, he's looking at me, he's like, hey, how's it going? How are you doing? And I'm going, did I talk to him on a dating site at one point She's and like, I don't hey, remember? Have I sucked your dick recently? Or, <laughs> yeah, have I? Have we been intimate? Or do you know me from the show? Like, are you just being really friendly and creepy about it? That is one and of I the drawbacks. That is one of the drawbacks of having pseudonyms. For those of you who don't know, we all have pseudonyms on this show. Some of us also have multiple pseudonyms for the other shit that we do. <laughs> and it gets really fucking confusing sometimes. It can. <laughs> Somebody will come up to me and be like, oh, my God, I love your work. And it's like, oh, which one? <laughs> <sighs> but that must have been totally horrifying to it was, get that well, call number for your daughter. One, she never knew. She knew the name Toxie and only because people slip in front of her and will call me Toxie. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> Um, so she knows that, but now she knows the, the, not that she couldn't have found it anyway online, but you know, now she knows it all. Are you afraid <laughs> she she's going to Google it? No, she, <laughs> she has specific instructions that this is when she's old enough, she can watch it all she wants and find out that her, her mom happens to like sex. <laughs> Gee, I never um. would have guessed. <laughs> By the way, Toxie <laughs> takes it in the pooper. Um, I do. <laughs> But actually, I've always said, I said, one day you'll watch it, and then you'll just realize that it's okay for a woman to be empowered, you know, um, to empower herself and allow herself to be sexual and kind That's of right. own up to her own sexuality and, you know, to be plus size and confident. So, you know, if she a, watches it, that's it. I, I've been a little less filtered around my kid, and so sometimes... <clears throat> when we start talking about the show, he'll he'll be like, "Is that the show you talk about sex?" Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it is. Among other things, but yes, we do talk about yeah. sex. Well, I don't hide anything, so everybody knows. My mom, she knows, she doesn't care. My sister knows, doesn't care. My nephew has promised to tune in, Oy. and I believe he has watched a lot of the episodes lately. So I told him, I said, "Hey, I'm not going to hold back." When we know you're tuning in, we are totally going to ask you about masturbating. <laughs> and if you call, just just like we've done before, if you call or you want to come into the studio or something like that, we will put you on the spot, just so you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's just like when uh, Shaun of the Dead was in here and he said, oh, my mom, I told my mom to tune in. And then he's like, hey, my mom's on. And I'm like, hey, so how about that masturbating? Like... <laughs> How does that work with the angry inch? <laughs> I don't know. He's probably got a big dick. I have no idea. I'd ask his dad, but that's a little weird. <laughs> Anaconda like, don't <laughs> want none unless you got buns, hon. I think we're talking about buns, though. I think we're... No anaconda. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. All right. That takes a minute. I didn't get that part. This is so pretty. Oh, I think uh, uh, Johnny Fever just turned a sh new shade of red I've never seen before. <laughs> That's like blood pressure. Because <laughs> he doesn't have a heart on, so he still has blood left in his body. <laughs> so Toxie and I went out this weekend, and it was the most... It was simultaneously one of the funnest nights and one of the most disappointing evenings of my life. So you we guys go, went to a party, a birthday we, party. We yeah. did. We went to uh, Tyra Scott's birthday party when she was on two weeks ago. She talked about it. We went because we were, you know, we love Tyra and we love trans girls and trans boys and trans everybody's. And so we went. And I mean, <clears throat> the the problem with going to a bar that is populated by many many trans people is that quite honestly you cannot tell the difference between a trans girl and a cis girl sometimes you can tell but some most of the time you cannot tell yeah and the other problem with going to a trans bar is if you are used to getting hit on at least once by the ugly creepy guy in the corner 
you're not even going to get looked at if you're a cis girl and it's obvious you're a cis girl and these are obviously cisgendered titties i <clears throat> had some guy very good looking cowboy guy which y'all know is kind of right up my alley He's like, hey, would you guys watch my table for me while I uh, go to the restroom? I'm like, sure. Do you, do you so have I... any really type of guy that's not up your alley? Because you kind of <laughs> like him. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the ridiculously muscled dudes totally creep me out. Okay. Like, I can't do that. So that's like the only yeah. no-go. Mm. How about little Italian guys from Philadelphia? She likes those. <laughs> Dated a couple of those. She likes some swarthy, like that whole Middle Eastern, Mediterranean. I love that Middle Eastern thing. <laughs> so fucking She hot. likes them all. I do. <laughs> I, I have fucked the rainbow, you guys. I'm just saying. <laughs> <clears throat> Except, and this is the one thing I regret, is I've never actually had sex with a 100% black dude. It's only been with a havesies. Havesies. A havesies. <laughs> yeah. So we go to this. I don't tea. believe that's the term. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to this trans bar and I watch the table for this hot looking cowboy dude. And he comes back. He's like, thanks, man. I'm like, dude. <laughs> and, I, and then I spend all night doing the coy over the shoulder. Hi. Nothing. He thought you were a dude? No. No. He, no. 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 he wasn't there for. Us. He was there with one of the performers. So okay. he. Every dude there was there for the trans girls. Got it. They wanted nothing to do with the three cisgendered chicks sitting in the back. Nothing. <laughs> like, it took us forever to get drinks. It took us forever oh, to get yeah, anything. Here's, yeah, here's the thing. I can normally, in in different types of bars, too. I know, like, because I act all, like, you know, naturally nice. <laughs> I'm like, hey, please excuse me. Like, hey. Um, I can normally just kind of work my way in and get up and get drinks. Yep. And I stood there forever. And you guys were even going, you still didn't get up there. And I'm like, no. She's standing <laughs> like three people me. back. And she's like, excuse, excuse me. Excuse. I don't have a dick. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, it was, it, I mean, not like, I'm not disparaging them. Obviously, I love trans people. But. It was really disheartening to not get any attention at a bar. I mean, not that I'm looking to find anyone. Obviously, I have someone. Not that I'm looking for anything, but it's really nice to get hit on. It's really nice to have some deferential treatment sometimes, you know. It's really nice to get a drink. It's really, <laughs> it's really nice to get a real drink, too, because I watched all the trans girls with big-ass cups. Yes. We these teeny, tiny little shot glasses. My, I ordered a Jager bomb. And I ask for it always. <laughs> it was like in a double glass. And, a double and usually glass. bartenders are like, oh, he he. You know, I say I want it um, on ice in a glass with a straw so I look like a lady. And bartenders usually chuckle. And, you know, I get a nice glass and I get a heavy dose of Jaeger in there. Do you need a tap? No. I get a heavy dose of Jaeger and um, it's great. And this one was, I get a cup that's like mouthwash size like a little bigger than a shot glass. And you can't, how you can't even taste the Jaeger in that is beyond me. Oh, I could smell that disgusting. She smelled like vomit from across I, the table. I, I was sniffing, even, I'm like, this is not my Jack Daniels and, and was, Diet Coke. It was gross. The straw was a regular straw up here and the glass was, it was bad. It was bad. It was super bad. And then two drinks was like $15, which I mean, I guess is okay for a, um, you know, a Las Vegas bar, but not when you're drink like, is that in most of its ice? It was crazy. It was super crazy. So, uh, I love you, Whitley. Uh, no, I love you, Tyra. And, and I love trans girls and I love trans, I really like trans guys. I really like trans girls too. I like them all, but I'm never going back to that bar. <laughs> I've, I've been there a few times. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been there a few times before. Um, was I've it like never... that all the time? Was it just this yeah, evening? Yeah, no, 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 no. It, it's like that all the time. Yeah, yeah. So we have decided collectively if, if this one ever wants to, if she, because she texts me, she's like, let's go out tonight. I'm like, all right, we'll go. She's, next time she does that, we're going to the studios. Because at That's least there, right. <laughs> at least there we know we're going to get hit on, even if it's by the ugly, creepy dude in the corner. <laughs> Or several of the ugly, creepy dudes. You know, sometimes they're just creepy. They're not ugly, but they come up to you like mouth breathing and jacking off like, hi, and it's like, um, <laughs> you're cute and all, but you might want to present without your penis in your hand. But I'll continue to watch you there in the corner. Just sit over there. I'll, I'll watch remember you that. If you, if you don't you mind just that? going yeah. over there. Yeah. 
that's if not going to be that's not going to be my opening line anymore. Yeah, please don't. If, if you don't mind letting me get out of the splash zone, and then once we're good, I will watch all night long. <laughs> oh my god, I was so, I got home that night and I was like, <sighs> I didn't get hit on once. I went to bed like that. I was sad. I went you to should, bed sad. At least you should touch each other's asses when you say goodnight to each other. That way. You get something out of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, nice I think we were, we were with Jezebel Jolie, so I think yeah. we molested each other many times. Well, that's good. It, but it wasn't, it wasn't enough. It wasn't no, satisfying enough. No, it wasn't enough. satisfying. There was no, like, coy smiles and, you know, little flirty talks. And, like, hey, and, be like, and, then, and then letting him down, he's be like, oh, I'm sorry, I have a boyfriend. I think my favorite part of being hit on by the creepy dude is going to my girlfriend and going, dude, I just got hit on by the creepy dude. <laughs> that's one of my favorite <laughs> I, parts. I think my favorite part of getting hit on by the creepy dude is going, we're together. <laughs> Which is we what we do pulled that out. Rooster. We, we used many to times. pull that out so many times. Like there was this one guy who was just like insistent, like hitting on her. And she's like, well, I'm with her. And I was like, yeah, she's with me. And then he just kept going at it. And then I went all full bitch on him. Like, listen, motherfucker, you better lay off my woman. And then he left us alone. <laughs> or when they come, my favorite is... Um, in addition to that, if, don't come at me at the very end of the night. Like that's yeah. the one because then I then I do. I'm like, I'm not the three thirty girl. Do you remember the guy who sat down at our table, started with you, got shot down, flirted with you, got <laughs> shot down, started talking to me? I was like, dude, my boyfriend's sitting like right here, <laughs> and I'm not gonna be your third choice, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, son. Second second choice don't. is just as bad. <laughs> But I mean, it's not like he even tried to be slick about it. Nope. Like, as soon as she was like, nope, he was like, hey, girl. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Fucking skeezer. <laughs> anyway. It wasn't even like, I'm going to kind of walk away and slide back. Yeah. <laughs> not even like hit on you at a different table. It would be like, just <laughs> literally just turn like 45 degrees. Hi. I don't know. <laughs> So uh, Alexia and I went on a road trip. We That's did. why we did not have the show last week because we didn't get back till almost eight o'clock at night. It was an awesome trip, I have to say. We went to go see the eclipse up as close as we could in Wyoming. It was so fucking beautiful up there. Y'all almost lost us. I'm saying we may not have if if we if we didn't have to come back for jobs and other responsibilities. I mean, I had my kid with me. If I'd have had my dog, I don't think I would have come back. I think I'd have put you on a bus and sent you home because it was well, beautiful up there. Uh, the very next day, I was Googling the town oh, I was I on move Zillow, to. too. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, and then I'm over on Indeed. Can I get a job up there making what I'm making yep, yep, and make yep, the yep. rent for the house? Like, yeah, I was I was trying to work it. It ain't happening, though. Um, but we had a great trip. We stayed at, uh, this is a term that I've heard in passing, but now it will be on the forefront of every every time somebody says vacation plans i'm gonna say are you staying at a koa because we stayed at a koa super site and it was amazing i okay so this is a completely unpaid for advertisement for yes. campgrounds of america also known as koa i know that they're like the laughing stock of like whatever the fucks and like people like hardcore campers are like that's not camping and you know like people who vacation are like that's not vacationing and uh it's like it, it's like this perfect little middle ground and it, and it's got something for every price range so we stayed in a uh utility tent site because we were sleeping in my van because i got a big ass van and my kid was sleeping in his little pop-up tent and that was all we needed was just access to electricity for her anti-death machine and, and the coffee, coffee. pot. Yeah. <laughs> and because uh, we only used the running water like twice, I think, to wash, to wash dishes. dishes. That was it because we brought all our own drinks. And um, I love KOAs because if you're just going to be in that area, it's perfect because you can leave all your shit there because it's a completely secured site. And then you can come back and none of your shit's gone unless some asshole camper took it. And then there's cameras everywhere. So you're all right. It was awesome. But. There's we, so many activities to do with the kids. Well, and the kids was... went to... We hung out at the campsite. Uh, we cooked over fire. They had a little fire pit for us. It was great. Mm -hmm. We roasted marshmallows. She made... 
what was it? The first night you made burgers. I made burgers. The second night she made roasted chicken with rice. It was awesome. And broccoli and steamed, steamed broccoli. broccoli. It was awesome. And it was like a base camp next to Bear Lake, which was phenomenally beautiful. Um, I, I like Lake Mead. I love going out there. I love going to like Willow Beach and all the little places. But there is nothing like seeing a lake where you can't see the other side. Yeah, Bear Lake is like that in a lot of places. It was gorgeous. And I, we came over this rise and boom, there it was. Never tired of that. No. And the, the so the trip up to Bear Lake, you have to go through this little town called Logan. And right after Logan is the Logan River Valley. And that's, that's, that's the moving. road you take to get to Bear Lake. And when you think of idyllic mountain road, this is the road you are thinking about. There's like tree tunnels you drive through. There's a river, a river, real honest to God water in a river bank rushing next to you. And not just like <laughs> gurgling. Blah, 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 blah. It's like. <sighs> I've been thinking to about this as I've wonderful. been telling people these stories uh, this whole week that we've been back. It's because we live in the desert. Okay? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I know like, that some of you guys around the country live in idyllic spots already. Um, some of you live in between rivers and all that. Whatever. <laughs> we live in the desert. <laughs> like the closest I ever get to a river is when the street in front of my house floods. Right. Once a year. So we get there. We set up camp. The next day we drive up to the Wyoming area and we park on the side of the road with a ton of other people and we watch the eclipse it's a two-hour adventure yeah. of the eclipse we've got chairs we've got our glasses which is a whole nother story <laughs> <laughs> um it was completely worth we didn't even have any headaches on the way up or mm -hmm. back but all of the being away from home, being away from the animals, being away from, you know, the responsibilities or whatever. It was the really so uncomfortable worth it. sleeping. Oh, yeah. The sleeping was bad. I do yeah, have to admit the sleeping that. Sleeping was bad. But I, we felt, we heard while we were sitting there watching that it was raining and cloudy here in Vegas. And we <laughs> only got like the last half hour uh, of the eclipse, which was when it was uh, leaving. And uh, we felt so, so bad no, for you didn't. guys, but not that bad because. Because <laughs> I warned all y'alls. I've been warning y'alls for a year. I've had like a six month countdown going. I had a three month countdown going. And then everybody like the week before, why are you going all the way up to Utah and Wyoming for the eclipse? What eclipse? What are you living under a rock? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so no, I don't feel bad for any of you people. Amazon though, I'm real mad at you, Amazon. I ordered all my viewing glasses online and a pair of $30 binoculars so that we could like get all fancy with watching the thing and maybe trying to maneuver them on the phone and take pictures and shit. Thursday, two days before we are supposed to leave, I get a notification that my shipment date has changed on the things that I've ordered to mid-September. So we spent the entire trip every time we stopped looking for viewing glasses and everyone was sold out except for literally the last guy before where we stopped to yep. watch our <laughs> eclipse and he had some that were like from idaho or some shit and, and this shit it was 20 minutes before the eclipse was about to start <laughs> so i bought eight of those motherfuckers put a sign on the back of my car solar viewing glasses ten dollars that's not what i paid for them <laughs> didn't sell any but that's okay because there's another eclipse in six years and then another one six months after that it was uh, absolutely surreal uh the best part for me was we watched it you know it took a little while to get there to totality but when you were able to take off your glasses and stare at the sun and see the silver ring and the little diamond part of it it was <laughs> amazing absolutely amazing completely worth any trip you decide to make in the six years and then uh the other part that was surreal alien like surreal was the dark during the day but it wasn't dark like it was dark but it wasn't dark so normally your shadow is very faded and and there's like multiple parts to it and things like that because the sun uh, comes straight down at you but you also have all the light reflected off the cars around you and all of the trees and the pavement and the other people ref light reflects off of everything so your shadow is not a defined outline thing one of the phenomenon that happens with the sun is that 90 percent of the solar radiation is blocked and so the only thing you're getting is pure light from the sun 
there is no reflection from any other surface so your shadow turns into an almost gruesome depiction of you as a shadow it's your twin it's my how did my kid put it it's like peter pan it's so in the kids cartoon movie peter pan when peter pan's shadow he cuts it off and he shakes it out and it's like a perfect outline it's exactly what it looks like and that is so surreal and then to see it looks like the sun is setting but not just in the west all the way around you the entire horizon is on fire because while you may be in the shadow of the sun everyone else further out and around you is not and so there is still daylight over there and you can see that daylight over there and it is super weird the temperature dropped like 10 degrees mm -hmm. um it got really quiet and then all of the like dusk sounds started happening but almost as soon as all of that started the sun started to come back out again and so like it was so surreal is the word for yeah. it is absolutely the word for it and i'm looking forward to the next two plan it for next time we'll all go as a group oh, stay yeah. at a super site koa super site well and it's uh the next one will be viewable closest to us in the middle of utah so we don't have to drive as far and then the next one after that will be viewable from where my sister lives in arkansas so we're just gonna stay at her place yeah we all camp on a property. <laughs> she got room. So um, let's let's skip the part about getting stuck for two hours next to another lake. But that was fun too. Uh, on the way back, Although, so do we have a good story from that. We do. We do have a great story for that. So we go back. We sleep for the night, and then the next day we're leaving to come back for lunch. We decide we want to stop for lunch. So we're looking around. I'm looking on my phone, and we find a state park. Yuba State Park. Yuba right? State Park, and it's a lake. Uh, it's one of those ugly, salty, marshy kind of lakes, but it's cool. It's got some trees by it, so we decide to go there. And as we drive in, there's a squirrel watching us as we drive in. He's 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 like, oh, people, okay. We get in, we park. Uh, Sierra here is like the master camper. <laughs> she pulls out all of her gear. She's got a tablecloth. She's got meat and cheese and bread and everything else. Uh, condiments, a Heinz to go with it, and. Uh, <laughs> We also have some fresh berries because everybody said, when you're up there in northern Utah, you got to get some fresh berries because that's what they're famous for. So we have some fresh berries. We made a fucking U-turn for fresh berries. <laughs> just saying. And they and were good. The, this cute, cute little squirrel peeks out from behind a tree and we're, we're all like super fascinated. It's the only wildlife in the area right now uh, besides the trees and the flies. And he peeks out, and we start throwing berries, and throwing them closer and closer. Hopefully, he'll come closer. We must have taken a thousand pictures of this I, motherfucking squirrel. I got like twenty-five pictures on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Videos, pictures, and everything. Cutest little thing. Totally vogued for us. To total squirrel uh, poses. Sitting up on his haunches with something in his hands. Yep. Like no, 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 no. He, he was totally <laughs> vogue squirrel. <laughs> And uh, so but he, he we, we feed him a lot. He ate tons of berries. And then uh, Sierra and her boy were going to go check out the lake. And I'm not walking that far. It's like a half a mile, a half right? Mile from where the I said, fuck that. Uh, I'll, hang like around, I'll hang around the van. Well, I'm going to stay with you. <laughs> so when we, when we first pulled up, of course, she has a side door open and everything. We pull everything out. And she leaves. She takes the keys. And I'm standing there by the van, you know, uh, doing my thing. And the squirrel, this motherfucking squirrel, starts heading towards the van. And I, I think it's adorable. Oh my god, it's so close to the van! No, this starts to head into the van. I, have, I chase that motherfucker away. And I'm like, okay, he's gone. No, motherfucker comes back. <laughs> he wants inside the van. So I said, uh-uh, no. Nah. Tons of flies. I'm like, oh, I don't want to close these doors because of all the flies, but I need to. So I close the door, but there's still one window open, and that's the driver's side window. So everything is closed up on the van except the driver's side window. The squirrel goes under the van. I'm like, motherfucker, he's going to find a way in. So I go a ways away. So you know how you go far away, you can see underneath the car? And I watch this squirrel go to every wheel well climb up in it and look for an opening to get into the van because that's what this squirrel does it lures you in with its cutesiness and then when you leave to go down and check out the lake it ransacks your motherfucking car that's what it does 
That's the job of the squirrel. We would have all died had that squirrel come home with us. Because he'd have been like asleep in the back and then he would have woke up and freaked out and latched on. Because that's how my luck is. He'd have latched onto my head. I'd have driven us off the road. We'd have all died in a fiery automobile accident. Headline would have been, fat bitches die because of chubby squirrel. Like that would have the been would be on the, the side headline. of the road smoking a cigarette. Like Yeah. Three more down. <laughs> yeah. So I'm watching, and this squirrel, he, he comes around, he's going around, he smells, he smells the human smells coming from the open window. And so it gets into the last wee well, and it's gauging how far it has to jump to get to the mirror to get into the motherfucking car. <laughs> I can see the gears working in this squirrel's head, and I said, no way! <laughs> you know, this is not the first time this little gangsta has done this shit. Uh-uh. I would have so taken this squirrel home, by the way. <laughs> Well, we named him Wilfred before we knew he was Willie G, like, uh, because he's such a chubby little fucker and he was eating berries. And I'm like, you know, every anybody coming south from northern Utah is on this road and probably stops here and, and feeds, feeds this him. little fucker berries. He's probably got the diabetes. So we named him Wilfred Brimley. And and so then he turned into Willie B because he was all gangsta thug squirrel all trying to Total. steal shit out of my fucking car. Little bastard. The result of this is that the entire next eight hours home, almost, is that there are now 476 million flies inside my van. So we drive the first 20 miles with all the windows down and the air conditioning on full blast, just trying to blow as many of these little fuckers as but we can But she has out. a van. It's, it's a long van. It's a big fucking van. You should have opened the back. I, well, no, no. Why I have you stayed have. back there and held the stuff in? If I'd have thought about it, I'd have put <laughs> my car around. around that up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I had the vents open in the back and I had all the windows down and we blew a, a large majority of them out, but there was still a ton of them in the van. So literally all the way from, look it up, Yuba State Park in uh, slightly southern Utah, all the way back to Las Vegas, Alexia is in my passenger seat <laughs> pulling some fucking ninja moves karate chopping flies out the window if they showed up in my purview i was like slide roll down the window get the motherfucker out do the whole time she's like <laughs> like the sound effects and everything you guys i wish i could have taken video of this shit but i was driving and also keeping flies off my fucking face it was i still had flies the next day when i took the van to get it washed meanwhile this girl's probably up in a wheel while dead right i'm now. telling you like it's I'm you know what you, you. you know and that was my first thought house. when that was my very actually my very first thought was a kind thought my very first thought was I need to make sure we tap the van a lot to make sure the squirrel is not under the mm -hmm. under it when we right. drive off because I don't want to get caught up in there like cats do sometimes, right? No. <laughs> that, that changed almost immediately. A little gangsta thug fucker. He, look, he's smart. He did not get fat and chubby like he is. That's right. Without knowing how not to die in the wheel well of a vehicle. <laughs> So that's our gangster squirrel story. And then there's that time we almost got killed by a pirate ship in the middle of Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> so as we're driving, you, you drive through tons of farmland. I have this running list of animals that we got to see. It includes a llama, which is awesome. Multiple llamas. And uh, one of the things that I noticed is that there are tons of weird abandoned things in the middle of fields, in the middle of farmer's fields. Isn't your dad a farmer? Like, can you explain why farmers leave weird abandoned shit in the middle of their fields? My dad has a mystery machine van in the middle of one of his fields. <laughs> I can't explain. I guess it's just a lot of space, and if you don't know what to do with it, but... You just put, like, a, like a one weird thing in the middle of your field. Or, like, a... Yeah, my a dad's has a mystery machine van. It, like, honestly, mystery yeah, machine? Serious. I mean, not... It looks like it. That's what it reminds <laughs> me of. That's what I thought it was when I was a kid. I can understand, like, broken... We saw a few pieces of rusted, broken farm equipment, mm -hmm. and there's no way to haul it off or whatever. So I can right. see that, but... There's tons of cars. There's always some kind of car in the middle of a field. Just an RV in the middle of a fucking field. And not like somebody's living in an RV, like windows all blown out on it. Is it a meth RV? <laughs> That's what Walter all White of Northern me, Utah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. I think it's idealic for a coffee table book if you're a photographer and you want to go on this quest. To, my ideas, that would be. Man. That would be. To, yeah, to just to shit farms, in fields, photograph weird ass shit yeah. in the middle uh, that yeah. farmers leave in the middle. Well, so I'm not, talking about just this. Just so you know, it's not always farmers that leave the shit because not every. I mean, like just using my dad's farm, 
it's huge and it's in different sections and there's like a main road and but there's still farm down here there's still farm down the hill like all of that land belongs to it and much like you see a mattress drop like in some random area people also like to leave their shit on farms because you're not you have a fucking farm most people don't have security cameras around their farm right so they're like hey i've got to get rid of this you know, vehicle I stole. I'm gonna drive it on to. You but know, when the farmer cars. goes out to get the stuff off out of the fields, and there's suddenly a magic mystery machine <laughs> right. van sitting in the middle of a field, why don't you call Joe, the neighbor, to come help you pull it out of the field? Right, but what do you do with it? You have to chop it yourself. You've got to pay someone to haul it or go through the effort of hauling it. If you've got the land, just fucking leave it So you it just there. farm around it? Just farm yeah. around it. <laughs> I mean, that's what we witnessed, was it not? Yeah, that's fucking, exactly what we yeah. People just farmed around and like old churches. And most likely they're not, all that stuff probably didn't belong to the farmer. I mean, it's probably shit that people abandoned there. And then the farmer's like, meh. <laughs> so I mentioned this on the way up to, uh, up into Wyoming and... It was then when the weirdest stuff just started showing up, and then she almost killed us. No, no, no. It was the pirate ship. <laughs> so now we're looking, all of us, me, her, my kid, sort of, we're all looking out the windows at the weird shit, and we're just pointing out the, you know, like, oh, my God, that's an old, you know, VW, blah, 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 you know, whatever we found in the fields. And then at some point, I'm like, what the fuck is that? That's a motherfucking pirate ship. There was a pirate ship in the middle of this guy's field. Not like, not like, oh, it's a boat. No, a fucking pirate ship. And so I'm like, it's a motherfucking pirate ship. So she looks, she goes, it's a motherfucking pirate ship. My kid in the back's like, whoa, that's a pirate ship. And then I redivert my attention to the road to the giant oncoming semi that I am now in his way because I have veered into the other lane. And so I start screaming and I swerve back and it's like, ah! I turn back into the lane. She's screaming. The kid's like, what's going on? And uh, that's how we almost got killed by a pirate ship in the middle of Wyoming. We did, of course, stop on the way back to, to take, take a picture, picture of the motherfucking pirate ship. To. So... And a pirate ship, that's, per that's there's a perfectly reasonable explanation. Right? For a pirate ship in the middle of a ship. field in Wyoming. Like, your buddy has a pirate ship, <laughs> and then your buddy's like, I really don't need the pirate ship anymore. It's not selling on Craigslist. Like, I tried eBay, just the pirate ship's not going. Like, hey, Joe Schmo, you've got all this land. Can I just put my pirate ship on your farm? And Joe Schmo's like, meh. But it's not like it's on the edge of the farm. It's in the middle of the yeah. fucking farm. Yeah, it's in the middle it of the field. I, I was thinking maybe, because I know about windbreaks when it comes to farms. Some farms need windbreaks. But they're not even piled in windbreak ways. Yeah. <laughs> Just random assortment things of crap. And then the weirdest part, though, is in the middle of the hills have eyes portions of Utah. Uh, where there's like a giant ravine and like 80 dead cars in the bottom of the ravine. Oh, it's like, yeah, yeah. oh, that's where the serial killers leave the cars. <laughs> and Utah don't give a shit. So, uh, Vendetta says it's probably an abandoned school float. Don't, aren't those like no, made that, of that cardboard? Yeah, that one. Yeah. That's long gone. I mean, I'm telling you, it's just some dude who's like, what do what I do it, with this pirate ship? No, I, I have. Come, I, I have figured out what the real reason is. Now, not that I called the fucking farmers. I don't know who the fuck he is. But so we know pirates. We and do. We're in the middle of the desert and they have a pirate ship. I'm thinking it's probably something similar where it's like it's a, a bunch Renfair of a or... bunch of rural Renfair nerds. And like they built a fucking boat and they probably like set sail on like the Great Sea Bear Lake or whatever once a year. And, like, everybody else is like, oh, I can't keep it in my, you know, little tiny <laughs> Wyoming town. And so, like, the one dude who's, like, got all the shit show jobs, he also happens to own, like, this little piece of land out on a farm. And they're like, oh, I'm just going to put it on your field, man. He's just like, fuck yeah. And well, so. Well, now I'm just curious. Now they probably go in. Didn't you ever sit. see Close Encounters? <laughs> That's I, how the ship just got dropping there. dropping shit off. I'd believe that too. Although it was, I would have believed that in Hills Have Eyes, Utah, but way up there where it was fucking beautiful in Wyoming, where we were, uh, like that's a little less alien country for me. That's a little more like you know nerdy rural Renfair pirate nerds who built a ship and left it in their buddy's field. We did uh, four states. Yes, Arizona, which was gorgeous, uh, but in its own means, the canyon we came through, mm -hmm. uh, and then into Utah, which is gorgeous. 
and up into Idaho, which is also gorgeous, and then Wyoming itself, which was gorgeous. It was a great trip. And the, the day we were in Idaho and Wyoming, because we were right on the border, we passed across the border like six times because at some point we decided, ah, let's just do a little off-roading because the van is capable and it's not like the roads were like off-road roads. They were just like dirt roads. Where we, where we pulled over to watch the eclipse, we didn't know, but there was a lake at our back. Yeah, and we found it because we were like, yeah, let's drive around here because you know, we ain't got nothing else to do now. Like, it was over with it by 11 a.m. and or like 11.30 and we're like, yeah, let's fuck around We were going to go get lunch. Day. That's what we were going to do. Yeah. <laughs> we were going to go get so lunch. So we're driving up this dirt road and then there's a tiny little sign, welcome to Idaho. <laughs> and then we come back, welcome to Wyoming. <laughs> Crossed the border like four times that day. It was great. I love it. No passports. Uh, <laughs> for now. Yeah. But no, nobody in Idaho is going to ask you for a passport. They're not going to be like, whoa, we want to see who we're letting in here. It's fucking Idaho. I will have They're you like, to know. Do you like potatoes? <gasps> I will have you to know that in. Utah has ports of entry. They do. Well, Utah's different. <laughs> not in Utah. <laughs> Every time we entered or exited Utah, it was through a port of entry. I, I tell you, it's been a while since I've been on a I think the last road trip... Uh, besides going uh, it, outside of Nevada was when uh, Calypso took me to go visit her tiny little Kansas town. And I you got almost involved. almost killed them with a wildflower, right? Uh, a cow. or Yeah, wildflower. Oh, look, weed. Oh, I thought it was a flower. And it was She a weed. said it was a weed or whatever. I love, I love seeing all that stuff. It's been a while. Um, if you can travel the country, do go go on a road trip, just a little one. Take a week off, man. See, just see some of this beautiful country. Nevada is just as gorgeous. Mount Charleston's an hour away. It's pretty, and it's gorgeous up there. Uh, what do we have? What's that Red Canyon thing that we have? Red Rock. <laughs> Red Rock Canyon is gorgeous. There are places around Lake Mead that's gorgeous. Just that's just local. You got locally beautiful shit too, and and don't take your local beauty for granted. There's because... this Target down the street for me that's just gorgeous. <laughs> I'm gonna take just you camping. Gorgeous. No, no, no. We don't camp. We glamp. she doesn't camp. She we glamp. I I do camways. That was my big camping thing. Yeah, and I then I got excited when they got microwaves and refrigerators in there. It, we went and I to pull a, up and I'm like, I need my Wi-Fi password. That's right. We went to a that's KOA super site. Yeah. Um, they had uh, a jump. What's that? Jump pillow? A jumping pillow. They had a pool. They had a jump pillow. They had bikes that you could rent. Did they they had... have a, a queen size bed, a queen size wooden bed, oh, and two we didn't. Beds? We didn't stay in a camping cabin. We oh, you stayed slept on in the a ground. No, we slept in my van. Because all the, the seats fold flat, the boys slept in a tent. They had they had yurt looking like tents ready yeah, ready go to, to go. Yurt. I want to do that. They had uh, camping like wooden little tiny log cabins ready to go. They had the, the super the cabins. Log too. cabins are where I go. Well, mm -hmm. they they had the super cabins that have like actual bedrooms too yeah, with right, that one. Right. So it but was they, fabulous. The one in Kingman has I think they have like one that's kind of like a trailer, so it's mm -hmm. not really a cabin, and that has like everything in there. And then the wooden cabins that are there, they're standard KOA cabins. Yeah, it's just so a they, queen bed and uh, bunk yeah, bed. Showers, bed bathrooms, oh. everything. It was awesome. 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 I loved it. So see, I would camp with you guys, but I would totally be the one who's like, I'm over here in this cabin. Well, the next time we I, go camping, I'm, I will have a, a, a tent trailer, a trailer that folds out into like a big lake. How does that work with fat people? I always wondered. I have seen those that pull out. And the sides of beds. Do you have to distribute? Yeah, you have to distribute. You got to get one fatty on one side and an equal number of fatties on the other. And like there's a you, scale in the beginning. So like she has to sleep on one side and I'll sleep on the other. And you can sleep on the little double bed that folds right? out in the middle. And I'm like, I'll even... I'll kind of even it out. In we'll the just middle. throw kids randomly <laughs> yeah. in places. All the kids have to sleep in one bed <laughs> to, to even out the weight. And I mean, I was wondering. That, that's I'm only like, if you get one of the pop outs that has. Yeah, it pop, that's out. what I plan on getting. Oh, okay. Out, but the beds are on this side, and it's literally held up by this little metal nah, piece. Nah, it's that's just a stabilizing bar. There's other brackets that hold it in place. That, I don't give a fuck what brackets are in there. <laughs> It's something that folds down and goes in. Like, if you look at a cardboard box, what is the least stable part of that box? The two flaps that come out. There's four flaps. Yeah, but I'm just referencing two. The thing doesn't have There's these ones. Flaps. That's true. These two flaps right here <laughs> are or, the or, least stable or, part of the box. The I think they're called box. the lips. <laughs> the lips. That's, we're not doing lips again. Hey, 
are we down to like four ago. minutes or something like that? One, one, one minute. minute? One minute. Oh. We don't have time for your uh, derp derp moment. Oh. So, no, we do have time for it. I'm going to make it real quick. So I messaged a person on Facebook and I thought I was being cool and calm and collected. And I, like the way I'm reciting the story to my friends is like, oh, and I was totally cool about it and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just read it to you. And I read it back to him. And it's like <laughs> the flowers of Venus and the effluvian and the blue. Blah, 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 I tell and you, like, the look <laughs> while she's reading the look that suffused her face of total abject error was hilarious mortified (laughs) the fact that this person not only responded to me and then subsequently like spent time with me after this message i'm i'm shocked they need like congratulations friend you truly are a friend because i was stupid (laughs) stupid no now, every single one of us has had one of those moments where we've either sent a message to, or tried to talk to someone and it just comes out as total gibberish. And we You're know describing my life. This wasn't even gibberish. This was like this was like somebody trying to be Shakespeare who had never read Shakespeare in their life. And I've read everything Shakespeare's ever written. I don't know why I sounded like a super derp during this fuck. It was so stupid. <laughs> it looked like uh, sands through the hourglass. As much as, as much as I love her to death, it was hilarious. The look she's reading, it, she's slowing down as she's reading, trying to, and she's thinking to herself, "I fucking wrote this. I fucking wrote this." And she keeps reading. Oh my god, it was hilarious. I was mortified. <laughs> so, friend, if you're watching and you know who I'm talking about, congratulations to you for continuing to have communication with me. Because I'd have been like, fuck that crazy motherfucker right there. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. This is Alexia. Toxie. And Sierra, the derpiest. <clears throat> we'll see you all next week. If you're brave enough. Later, bitches. <laughs> 